and welcome Raise Your Game today. I'm David Levin. This is our Tuesday episode. So it's sports and sports parenting. Friday is for all things inner game. So today we're talking about the inner life of teenage athletes and how to help lift some of the burden they carry. You know, it is hard enough just being a teenager in the first place. <laughs> maybe you remember, and I think maybe now more than ever, you know, you're starting to come into your own as an adult, but just have no idea really who you are yet. Uh, so many things are changing in all areas, physically, emotionally, mentally, with your responsibilities and your relationships. I was looking at a family picture from just a year ago, literally one year ago, like this week, and our son looks completely different. The difference from 16 to 17 is like from 12 to 20, and that's just physically. It's crazy. But then you add on top of that the extra demands of being an athlete, the time, the work, the physical effort, the pressure to perform, keep their grades up. It's pretty remarkable what it takes for kids to be in sports. And of course, they want to do it, we assume, right? We're not forcing them, I hope, but still, it's a lot. And really, it's more than we want for them as parents, more of a load than we want them to carry. And I actually know something about this that most parents don't because kids tend to keep it to themselves. And that is that they're carrying a lot of stress and worry. Every kid I work with or who takes our training in any form takes our mental game assessment before and after the training. It helps us know which areas are strong for them and which need attention and helps, of course, measure the difference the training makes for them. And there is a very consistent pattern in the pre-training assessment, which is happiness score is high. Yep, I'm pretty happy. But the freedom from worry score, along with the other stress indicators, is low, like, you know, one to three out of 12, very low, and just a huge disconnect between their happiness score and their stress and worry score. And that's why parents and coaches don't know about it. We see their happiness score basically in who they are day to day. And we're all, you know, pretty much happy people. But their worry and stress scores, they keep to themselves. Now, you know, we probably do see some worry and stress <laughs> come out in other ways. And especially with some kids, they act out, they get testy and moody and short. Though, again, others, we don't see it at all. They totally keep it to themselves. But it is rare that I see a pre-assessment with a good score in these areas. So that's the bad news, I guess. Our kids are struggling with their mental game, with worry and stress way more than we realize. The good news is we can definitely help. We can help them enjoy themselves more and not be so stressed out and worried. The way we do that in the training is we give them new ways to become aware of the specific things, the mechanisms uh, that are causing them to get stressed out and distracted and worried in the first place, along with some simple skills and tools they can use to get control of that. So it's basically boosting their self-awareness and their self-regulation, which is, you know, just incredibly powerful and helpful in all areas of their lives. It also helps them feel like a weight has been lifted from them, because in a lot of ways it has. Stress and worry are like physical weights hanging on us, pulling us down, making everything harder. So when we learn to free ourselves from those, it's almost like, like the sun coming out on a cloudy day. You just feel better and stronger and lighter, more positive and capable. Life just feels more fun in a lot of ways. And that is exactly what we want our kids to feel when they're competing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious, but sports are supposed to be fun, right? It is a game, after all, and that's almost certainly why they got into it in the first place. And one of the saddest parts of sports as kids get better is that the fun tends to go away. I was talking with another kid not long ago, like a couple months ago maybe, hockey player, junior in high school, and he mentioned how much fun he has in practice, but that he's super stressed out in games. And it occurred to me to say, what difference would it make if you could have as much fun on game day as you had in practice? 
And you could see it was sort of a shocking question for him. There was this long pause. He thought about it, and he finally said, that changed everything. I mean, I would play at a completely different level. So I would suggest, and I actually think this can be very powerful, to have your child really think about this, to pay some deep attention to the details of what they feel like when they're having fun. How do they move? What's their breathing like? What are they looking at? Where's their attention? What are they thinking about? Have them think about all those things and write them down just to kind of help them, you know, think through them in more depth, and then work to intentionally bring those into their competition mode. There are several aspects of this that can be uh, super helpful, but the biggest one is that it's much more motivating and empowering. One of the big barriers people have to personal development of all kinds is that we're not sure we can do it, right? We just don't know if we can develop more willpower, for example, or better habits or whatever it is. And in this case, for athletes, they're already pushing themselves really hard. If they discover or you know feel that they need to up their game further, well, it's pretty natural to think, I'm not sure I can do it. I'm not sure there's more there, right? That's a real concern. But this focus on the fun experience helps them break through that. So here's what I mean. Remember, our hockey player said, if I had as much fun on game day as I do in practice, I would play at a whole new level, right? What does that tell us? He doesn't have to create and develop and discover some new level of performance. He's already at that level, just not on game day. So the work for him is not to develop some new place he's never been before. It's just to learn to stop the inner mechanisms that are blocking that from coming out. <laughs> that is a whole new perspective, and it just feels completely doable, or at least relatively completely doable. So anyway, that's really what I wanted to talk about today. First, this observation that our kids are struggling way more with their mental game than we probably realize, especially around stress and worry about their performance relating to you know, being in sports, and that there are a couple of things we can do that really help. One is to give them the self-awareness and self-regulation skills to get control of their mental game, and the other is to help them connect with the fun they have when they're just playing the game, and then work on bringing that fun, that, that whole mindset, all the elements of that, to their performance on game day. All right, that is today's episode, The Secret Burden Teen Athletes Carry and How to Lift It. I hope that makes sense and that it seems helpful. If you have teenagers in sports, and I'm assuming a lot of you do if you're listening to this one, please do check out our Mental Game Starter Kit. It's a great set of resources to help you start boosting your child's mental game, and especially the mental game assessment I mentioned. It's part of the kit. So have your child take that assessment. You'll both love what it tells you. It really gets things off to a great start. So just go to raiseyourinnergame.com, scroll to the bottom, you can learn about that and register there. It's all free, of course, super helpful. If you like what you heard on today's show, please do us a favor, tell your friends and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps more people find the show and get the mental game boost they need. If you're listening to the audio podcast and you like video, we do post all our episodes on YouTube as well. There's a link to that in the show notes. For more mental game goodness, as we always say, please do join our free community, the Raise Your Inner Game Charging Station. It's actually kind of automatically part of the starter kit you get. But you click the link, you go there, and uh, you can register, again, totally free. You'll love that. If you'd like to support the show so we can keep things ad-free, please click the Buy Me A Coffee link below. And thank you for that. And finally, we will close as uh, frequently we do with Steve Prefontaine, the legendary long distance runner, and his quote from the end of the Raise Your Inner Game book, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice your gift. You don't wanna do that. <laughs> That's what we're doing, folks. We are working to be our best and to help our kids be their best. It's the gift that keeps on giving and the world needs as much of it as it can get. So. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you next time.